Welcome to Lesson 9.1. In this video, we'll be defining parametric equations and then taking their derivatives. Parametric equations involve three variables, which is x, y, and then usually t is our third variable. For example, we would have x of t is equal to 3t squared and y of t is equal to t minus 2. So if we're given some value of t, for instance, t equals 2, we can figure out what's our x coordinate at t equals 2 and our, what's our y coordinate at t equals 2. If x of t and y of t are both continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then the equations x of t and y of t are considered our parametric equations. So this and this, that's our parametric equations. t is called the parameter. It's that third variable that we're using to calculate the x and the y. Parametric equations allow us to determine the position, the x-y position in the coordinate plane of a particle at a given time. We can graph curves defined by parametric equations by plugging in different values for t. So right now, let's graph the curve defined by the parametric equations x of t equals 3t squared and y of t equals t minus 2. I'm going to start with a t value of negative 4, and then we'll do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. For t equals negative 4, to find my x of t, I'm just going to plug negative 4 into this equation. So x of negative 4 would be 3 times negative 4 squared, Negative 4 squared makes a 16, and 3 times that 16 is going to make a 48. So x of negative 4 is equal to 48. Now let's find y of negative 4. y of negative 4 would be negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6. Now the t, that doesn't have anything to do with what I actually plot. That parameter, it, we don't have an axis for that. We don't have a t-axis. We only have an x-axis and a y-axis. So the point that I get out of this first one is 48 comma negative 6. So I would go over to 48 and then I would go down 6 units. And that would be the point at which t is equal to negative 4. Then I can go through that same process of plugging in my t value into these two equations and getting an xy point for all of these other values of t that I've gotten. Now I can connect all of these dots to get a smooth curve. So this is how you graph a pair of parametric equations. Now you can also graph parametric equations by using the graphing calculator. All that you need to do is switch the mode over to parametric mode. So for example, if I was trying to graph these two right here, the x of t equals 3t squared and the y of t equals t minus 2, my first step is going to be to hit this mode button up here. And then you can see down here, we have it on a normal function right now, but you can also switch it to parametric or polar. So I'm going to hit parametric. And then what that's going to do is when I then go to graph the functions, I'm going to have x1 of t and y1 of t instead of just having a regular y equals for my function, because every line that gets graphed is going to be a combination of two parametric equations. For my x equation, I have 3t squared. So I hit 3, and then this button that normally gives me an x right here, if I hit this one, it normally gives me an x. When I'm in parametric mode, it gives me a t, which is perfect. So we have 3t squared for the x one, and then for the y one, we're going to have t minus 2. Then you can graph it by hitting the graph button. Now notice how they've only included this top half of the curve right there. That's because when the graphing calculator graphs parametric equations, they're starting at t equals zero because they're, they're assuming that you can't really have negative time. And that's pretty much true. So we put in some negative values here just to see what the rest of the curve would look like. But typically, your parametric equations are going to start at t equals zero. On the AP exam, sometimes they will say these are your parametric equations for t b greater than or equal to zero. We can also find the derivatives of parametric equations. To find parametric derivatives, we use the formula dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. This is a really important formula right here, because as we know it now, when we take a derivative, we use dy dx. However, now our equations are in terms of t. So what we're doing is we're taking this dy dt and placing it over dx dt. That's the same thing as a dy dx. Now, these two are actually the same thing. We're just incorporating that t in there somewhere. Now, this is only true for dx dt not being equal to zero, because if dx dt is equal to zero, then we wind up dividing by zero, and that's a problem right there. Horizontal tangent lines occur when the dy dt is equal to zero, and vertical tangent lines occur when the dx dt is equal to zero. Let's think about why this is. If this is our derivative, we know that when the derivative is zero, we have a horizontal tangent line. Now, if the derivative is equal to zero, that means that our numerator right up here, this dy dt, would need to be equal to zero. So that's why we get a horizontal tangent line when dy dt equals zero. And we get vertical tangent lines when we are when our derivative is undefined. Now, if we have dx dt being equal to zero, if we're dividing by zero right there, that's going to make our derivative undefined. So in that case, that's what we want. Let's take a look at some multiple choice questions. A curve C is defined by the parametric equations x of t is equal to e to the power of t and y of t is equal to t squared plus 5. 
What is the slope of the line tangent to the graph of C at the point where T equals 3? Slope of the tangent line or slope of the line tangent to the graph, that always means dy dx, the derivative. So we are looking for dy dx, but since we're working with parametric equations, instead of just finding our dy dx right away from a single equation, we're going to have to do dy dt over dx dt. Now, what is dy dt? Let's just focus on the numerator for now. Well, we would take the derivative of this t squared plus 5, and that would produce a 2t. dx dt on the bottom, what's the derivative of x of t is equal to e to the power of t with respect to t? Well, that's just going to be a plain e to the power of t, since e to the power of t is its own derivative. So this is our derivative, dy dx, but we do have it in terms of t right here. So what we have to do, since it's asking for the slope of the line tangent to the graph at the point where t is equal to 3, we just plug in 3 for t right here. So we would be taking dy dt at t is equal to 3 and dividing by dx dt at t is equal to 3. And remember what that entails is we just plug in a 3 into this equation. So we would have 2 times 3 over e to the power of 3, which is equal to 6 over e cubed. That matches answer choice B. A curve in the plane is defined parametrically by the equations x of t equals 2t cubed minus t squared and y of t is equal to t to the fourth. What is the equation of the line tangent to the curve at t equals 2? Since it's asking for an equation of the tangent line, that means that we need two things, a point and a slope. To get the point, we can take this t equals 2 and we can plug 2 in for t into this equation and to this equation. So that will get us our x comma y coordinate point x of 2 is going to be equal to 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 squared. And that would be 16 minus 4, which is equal to 12. y of 2 would be equal to 2 to the 4th, just plugging in a 2 for t right there, and that's going to be equal to 16. So we know that our coordinate point that we're working with here is going to be 12 comma 16. Now we have to find the slope. If we're looking for the slope of the tangent line, remember that that's always dy dx. Now in this case, we have to transition that into a parametric derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to take dy dt and divide by that dx dt. dy dt, if we take the derivative of t to the fourth with respect to t, that's going to be 4t cubed. dx dt, derivative of x of t, is going to be 6t squared minus 2t. Then if we find this derivative at the specific value t equals 2, if we find dy dx at t equals 2, that means that we're just going to plug in a 2 everywhere that we see a t up there. So we'd have 4 times 2 cubed over 6 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2. We can evaluate that, and that's going to turn out to be 32 divided by, let's see, 6 times 4 makes it 24, minus that 4 would just be a 20. 32 twentieths simplifies down into 16 tenths or 8 fifths. So this is going to be our slope of the tangent line. So now we take this slope of m equals 8 fifths and the point of 12 comma 16, and we write an equation using those. So we would take y minus y1, which in this case is y minus 16, is equal to m, 8 fifths, times x minus x1, or x minus 12. If we move the 16 to the other side, we get y is equal to 8 fifths times x minus 12, close parentheses, plus 16. This matches answer choice A. So this would be the equation of the line tangent to that curve that's defined by these parametric equations at t equals 2. A curve in the plane is defined parametrically by the equations x of t equals 5t and y of t equals t squared minus 1. What is the equation of the line tangent to the curve at t equals 1? Again, since we're looking for the equation of a tangent line, what we need is a point and a slope. To get the point, I'm going to plug in x of 1 and y of 1 to see what my x and y values will be. x of 1 is going to be 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. y of 1, if we plug 1 into this equation, we would get 1 squared minus 1, which would be equal to 0. Then we have to find the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative. In this case, we'll be taking dy dx, but really we're taking dy dt over dx dt because we have to be able to do this parametrically. And then if we're taking dy dt, the derivative of this equation with respect to t is going to be 2t. The derivative of our 5t with respect to t is going to be 5. Now we need to find that dy dx, the slope of our tangent line, at t equals 1. So that's going to be 2 times 1 over 5, just plugging in a 1 right there and that's really equal to 2 fifths. This would be the slope, or our m value. So we have the point of 5 comma 0, and the slope of m is equal to 2 fifths. Then we can make an equation out of those. y minus y1, or 0, is equal to m, 2 fifths, times x minus that 5, the x1. This means that y is equal to 2 fifths x minus 2, getting rid of that 0 and distributing the 2 fifths. This matches answer choice D. 
A curve in the plane is defined parametrically by the equations x equals 4t to the fourth minus t squared and y equals the cosine of 2t for t being greater than zero. That's really important in this case. They gave us a specific restriction. For what value or values of t does this curve have a vertical tangent? Remember that a parametric curve is going to have a vertical tangent when dx dt is equal to zero. And the reason for that is that normally when we find the derivative, which is dy dx, but really dy dt over dx dt, we know that any curve is going to have a vertical tangent when our derivative is undefined. And to make this derivative undefined, we would need our denominator dx dt to be equal to zero. So if we take dx dt and we set it equal to zero, well, we probably need to find dx dt as well. So we have x is equal to 4t to the fourth minus t squared. Let's get dx dt and we'll set that equal to zero. So dx dt is going to be equal to 16t cubed minus 2t. Then we set this equal to zero. We say zero is equal to, and I'm also going to factor out a 2t at this point. If we factor out 2t from 16t cubed, that's going to be 8t squared, and then we would just have a minus 1. Now, if we split this in two, we could say 2t is equal to zero, which means that t is equal to zero. But when t is equal to zero, we're not following this constraint that t needs to be greater than zero. So we'll just cross that one off. And then for 8t squared minus 1, that one would also have to be equal to 0. If 8t squared minus 1 equals 0, that means that t squared is equal to 1 eighth. And then we can take the square root of both sides. t is equal to plus or minus rad 1 eighth. But remember, that negative one is not going to be included here because we are only working with t being greater than 0. So really, we're only working with t is equal to positive 1 over rad 8. The 1 on the top, since the square root of 1 is 1, we can also just write this as 1 over rad 8. This is equivalent to 1 over 2 rad 2 if we simplify that radical a little bit. Therefore, choice A is correct. 1 over 2 rad 2 is that only value of t for which this curve is going to have a vertical tangent. For what value or values of t does the curve defined by the parametric equations x equals 5e to the power of t and y equals 3t cubed minus 4t have a horizontal tangent? A horizontal tangent means that our derivative needs to be equal to zero, and more specifically, the numerator of our derivative needs to be equal to zero. When we're dealing with parametric equations, the numerator of our derivative is going to be dy dt. So dy dt needs to be equal to zero. In this case, dy dt is going to be equal to, and we can take the derivative of this equation to figure that out, that's going to be 9t squared minus 4. If this needs to be equal to zero, we would then get that 9t squared is equal to 4, t squared is equal to 4 ninths, and then we would have t is equal to plus or minus rad 4 over rad 9. That's going to be equal to plus or minus 2 thirds. Therefore, choice C is our correct answer. A curve C is defined by the parametric equations x of t equals 4 times the sine of t and y of t is equal to t cubed over 3. Part A says what is the slope of the line tangent to the graph of C at t equals pi over 3? First, let's figure out dy dx because we need that equation that we can plug our value of t equals pi over 3 into. dy dx is really dy dt over dx dt. So if we can figure out those two individual portions, we'll be good. If we're trying to find dy dt, that's going to be the derivative of this equation right here. The derivative of t cubed over 3 with respect to t is going to make a t squared. Then for the denominator, we take the derivative of 4 times the sine of t. Derivative of 4 times the sine of t is going to be 4 times the cosine of t. So this is our derivative, but it's asking for the slope of the line tangent to c at specifically t equals pi over 3. So if we want to find dy dx at t equals pi over 3, what we can do is we can say that's equal to pi over 3 squared, which is plugging in pi over 3 everywhere that we see a t here, over 4 times the cosine of pi over 3. Now the cosine of pi over 3 is really 1 half. So if we do some simplifying here, we would have, and then this pi over 3 squared, that's going to make a pi squared over 9, and that's all over 4 times 1 half. That's going to be equal to pi squared over 9 divided by 2, which is really equal to pi squared over 18. So that would be the slope of the line tangent to c at t equals pi over 3. Part b says for which value or values of t on the open interval from negative 3 is less than t is less than 3, is the line tangent to c horizontal? Having a horizontal tangent line means that dy dt is equal to zero because we need the numerator of our derivative to be equal to zero. Let's find dy dt. We already did that up here. It's equal to t squared. So if we say zero needs to be equal to t squared, well, that just means that t would be equal to zero. So we would say at t equals zero, the line tangent to c is horizontal. 
Part C says for which value or values of t on the open interval from negative 3 is less than t is less than 3 is the line tangent to c vertical. So we just did a horizontal tangent line, which is when dy dt is equal to 0. For a vertical tangent line, we need dx dt to be equal to 0. We know what dx dt is. It's 4 times the cosine of t. So we need 0 to be equal to 4 times the cosine of t. This means that we need the cosine of t to be equal to 0. Now we have to think about which values of t within the interval from negative 3 is less than t is less than positive 3 would make the cosine of t equal to 0. We could plug in a pi over 2 and that would make the cosine of t equal to 0 because the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. Now we could also plug in a 3 pi over 2 to make the cosine of 3 pi over 2 equal to 0 but the problem is 3 pi over 2 is outside of this range because it's 1.5 pi and pi is already greater than 3. So the only other one that we can do is negative pi over 2. Those are the two values of t on this open interval for which the line tangent to c is vertical. A particle moving along a curve in the xy plane is at position x of t comma y of t at time t is greater than 0. The particle moves in such a way that dx dt is equal to the square root of 1 plus t squared and dy dt is equal to the natural log of 2 plus t squared. At time t equals 4, the particle is at the point 1 comma 5. Part A says find the slope of the line tangent to the path of the particle at time t equals 4. Essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the y dx at t equals 4. However, since we're dealing with parametric equations here, we have to transition this over to dy dt over dx dt. And also, we're looking for this value specifically at t equals 4. So we're going to say dy dx at t equals 4 is equal to dy dt at t equals 4 divided by dx dt at t equals 4. Now, we have access to the calculator for this problem. So what we can do, first I'm just going to write out what I'm plugging in, and then I'll be able to plug that into the calculator. So they gave us dy dt. It's the natural log of 2 plus t squared. So we just have to plug in a 4 for that t. So we would say that's equal to the natural log of 2 plus 4 squared. And then we would be dividing that by dx dt at t equals 4, which is the square root of 1 plus 4 squared. Then we can use the calculator to get an exact decimal answer for this problem. That would be equal to 0.701. So the slope of the line tangent to the path of the particle at time t equals 4 is 0.701.